John Collins here, the paper airplane guy. I want to show you how to make a really good glider today. It's called the plane. Here's what it looks like in action. Um, really easy to fly, uh, not too difficult to make. This is a really solid glider. See, it's stalled just a little bit right there. If I were uh, flying outside, I would leave it adjusted just like that. Uh, if I were um, going to throw it indoors, I might back off on the up elevator on that one just a little bit. But you can see the up elevator down there at the bottom of the picture. Uh, but let's get going on the folding. It, it's pretty easy to make. You'll, you'll, this will be one of your go-to planes, no question about it. Uh, the plane. Such a good glider when I invented it, I didn't think I'd ever invent a better glider than this, so I just called it the plane. <laughs> Not a very creative day for me, I must admit. We're going to start with diagonal folds, taking the top and putting it against the side. Lining up that corner and then sweeping down like that. Open that up. Diagonal fold the other direction. You know, if you've done any folding, you know what a diagonal fold is. No big mystery here. There we go. Diagonal fold that way. Diagonal fold that way. Unfolding. And now we're going to fold these top corners right down to the ends of the crease. Ends of the creases, I should say. And so... I'm just going to carefully line that up so I make a crease that goes right through the middle of the X. I'm just going to double check that that's hitting right where it should before I sweep that way and then sweep that way. Uh, and now we're going to do a couple of reverse folds. Now you could do this without reverse folds. You could open this up and make a crease that goes that way and then make a crease that goes, uh, you know, this, this way. You could go that way and that way and then collapse that in like this, but there's a much quicker way to do it. When I originally diagrammed the gliding flight, that's how I showed people how to do it. Um, but there's an easier way to do this, just, just making reverse folds. You have to really hold the layers down tightly here as you make your first reference crease for what's going to be a reverse fold. So we're going to do that, just moving this edge right up against this diagonal crease right here. You can see I'm just laying it right there as close as I can, making a really sharp crease because I'm going to manipulate those layers in a moment. Do the same thing on this side. You can see I got a crease running here. I'm just going to bring that outside edge in so that it matches that. Try to hit this corner down here as neatly as you can as you lay this edge up against that diagonal crease. Kind of wiggle it in there sometimes. It doesn't want to line up perfect for you. There we go. Really sharpen those creases because you're going to want that nice and sharp like that. Uh, now what we're going to do is open up these two flaps and we're going to tuck them in. This part is the part that gets reversed. So as you lift this up to do the reverse fold, what you're going to do is follow the crease on the bottom here, that direction that that's going to go. And the crease, this crease is going to end up the other direction. So this is a valley fold right now. It's going to end up being a mountain fold. So you could turn it into a mountain fold before you do it. Some, some people find that easier. So let's just turn that into a mountain fold. And now I'm going to lift up this layer push this in. This is the part that really gets reverse direction. It starts out a mountain fold that way and it's going to end up a valley fold inside and that's reverse. So it's like real old-fashioned milk carton where you just pop the top back in like that. That's what a reverse fold is. So again we started here, we did that, that's the where the creases are going to go and then I open it up and just pull that down to the inside following the crease on the bottom and reversing the direction of this crease right here. So here we go. Let's, let's do it on this side. You'll see it kind of happen here. I'm just lifting it up, moving that to the inside, and reversing it like that. So there we go. Reversed. Sort of a, and you, here's a kind of a theme, this water bomb base idea where we're creating layers like this with a collapsing fold. You'll see that in a lot of paper airplane designs, and this is no exception. So the next trick we're going to do is take this corner and move it over so it touches this diagonal fold moving across here. And we want one end of the crease to start here, and the other limit is going to be this corner touching the diagonal fold. So it looks like this when you're doing it. Start here, swing it over, and just let that corner touch that crease, and then make the crease here. This edge should be parallel to the top of the page, or the top of the plane at this point. So if it doesn't look pretty close to parallel, you might want to rethink how you've made this crease. But again, the end of the crease is here at this top corner. So pick it up, knowing that your crease starts there, swing this guy over and line it up with this crease here. Now the, the other side should be easy. This point should go right here. So you've got a pretty good landmark here. And again, the crease should start up top there, move over this direction, and that corner should go right there. I'm going just a little bit too far there. Let me just back that up. There, there we go. 
And you want to keep, keep track of these layers here. You don't want these layers to bubble too much. So if it looks like they're bowing up too much, make sure that that's going to lay nice and flat underneath these layers here. That's going to be, you know, the, the wing. So you want to make sure those layers are nice and tight. Uh, now we're going to lift up this edge right along this layer right here. This just goes straight up. No big deal. There's already a crease there. I'm going to flip it over to do the next step here, which is to fold this little trapezoid guy sticking up and just folding it down like that. Now we're going to rotate it, getting ready to fold in half. And again, you pay attention to the single layer corners. That's going to be the tail of the plane. If you pay attention to those two corners, your wings will turn out the same size. These corners, depending on how accurate your diagonals are, they might be a little bit off. Uh, your front corners and your rear corners should line up. So here we go. Moving the bottom half up, getting the two rear corners right where I want them to make those wings the same size. Working on the front and then double checking the rear corner again. And then you might have a little trouble right here. This is pressing not too, not too bad for me, so that's looking good. And I'm just going to ease my way into a center crease here. Start it at the back, sweeping that way, starting at the front, going that way. There we go. Center crease done. And now what we're going to do, if you leave it like this, it'll fly a little bit, uh, but it really will be a little bit... Um, it'll feel like it's tail heavy. It'll feel like it'll stall. That's because the center of lift is too far forward. So in order to shove the center of lift back a little bit, we're going to take this corner and tuck it into this pocket right here. So let's start by making a preliminary crease to do that. So you just want to start at the front of the pocket here, and this edge is going to end up hitting the corner right here. So you move that over so it's just, just like that. That's your preliminary move, and then you just put it in the pocket just like that. And let's flip it over, and of course, you know, we're going to do the same thing to this side. No big mystery. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. So we're going to start lined up with that pocket on the front and move it over so it just, just hits that corner right there, just inside of that corner. Give yourself enough room that you can put it in there. Make a nice sharp crease, and then lift that up and just, just stuff that corner right in there. And you've got this nice radius shape to the wing. It's a really unique looking plane because of that. It almost looks like a curve on the front of the plane. It's not, but it does kind of look that way. Um, I just like having the front of the plane pointing left, so I'm going to do that. Get the really short side in front and the long single layer uh, edges back here. And the wing fold is going to start halfway up the short edge and rake up, you know, about an inch. So if you look at a thumb width, a little bit more than a thumb width at the tail, and start right in the center of that short edge there. And I'm just going to rake it up a little bit toward the tail. There's my thumb. And I'm just going to give it just a skosh more than that. And you want the tail to be a bit taller than the nose. That'll just give it a little more stability. Make your wing size come out just about right. So there's one wing done. You can see it's just a bit, a bit taller than my thumb. My thumb's about 22 millimeters. So if you're going to measure that, that would be like 25, 27 uh, millimeters, something like that, at the front. And start right in the middle of this little fold in front. Okay, so there's one wing done, flipping it over. Main thing is that the wings match, right? So it's basic paper airplane making 101. Make the wings match. Whatever you do to one side of the plane, do to the other. So I'm lining that up best I can. Start in the middle and sweep back. Start in the middle and sweep forward. And there we go. That's, that's it for the folding of the plane. Now it's about the adjusting. I'm going to make sure that these diagonals on both sides are nice and flat. I'm going to pop the wings up a little bit. I, mean, I like to smooth this out with my thumbnail a little bit so that this just lays nice and flat there. And then another trick that I developed, particularly for this plane, that I've used in other planes since, is I just do a little bit of an upward crimp just, just to the other side of the, of the center crease. So just doing a little upward crimp there. And I'm adding positive dihedral that way. So that works my wing fold a little bit less, and it has the benefit of really helping these layers stay pressed together. So this little bit of upward crimp to add positive dihedral is, it, it's kind of a nice little trick. You'll find yourself using that for other planes. Uh, it's just kind of a nice way to keep your layers hugged together uh, tightly and, and add uh, positive dihedral without overworking these wing creases. And then of course, I'm gonna give myself a little bit of up elevator right here. So you can see, it doesn't take a lot of positive dihedral. It's really a broad wing glider. Nice slow flyer, and you can see that um, you know when you when you look at this thing fly, you can see it really just kind of cruises slowly across the room. I'm not giving it much of a throw. Nice slow bang right there. <laughs> Easy plane to fold. 
fun plane to fly, a little more up elevated for outside. Hey, by the way, uh, if you like what you're seeing here, check out the book. It's available on thepaperairplaneguy.com. And right now you can use promo code FLASH, capital F A F L A S H, FLASH, F L A S H. I wish I could spell FLASH <laughs> right off the top of my head. <laughs> anyway, that's the folding for the plane. If you like what you're seeing here, check out the book. You'll like that even more. Catch you soon.